Octacore. Uh, Hexacore. And Quadcore. All in one video. Let's do it. You're never a loser if you're an AMD user. So AMD, the new Ryzen stuff is here and we've got a few different things to, to look at. I wanted to kind of like just go right down the middle and just see the performance difference between quad core, hex core and octa core. So I'm looking at the 3400G, that's the new Ryzen 5 part that has the integrated graphics. And I'm also looking at the 3600X, which is the top of the line uh, R5 part. And then we also have the Ryzen 7 3700X. And it's similar in frequency to the 3600X, but you got a couple more cores. And not every game supports a gazillion cores. So I wanted to see like if you're only looking for gaming, if it's going to be better to get fewer cores and save a little money, spend a little bit more money on your GPU maybe. Or if, you know, now that today's modern games are incorporating more and more, uh, more and more threads, we're using more and more threads. So maybe it is a good idea to go ahead and get more cores. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. We're also going to talk about these just a little bit. Now, first off for the test system that I put together here, I've got this beautiful EVGA 2070 stream clock. Ooh. Got a backplate, two fans on top, full RGB and all that. It is also an overclock 2070. So I didn't want to, you know, skimp at all on that. Wanted to make sure we have really good performance. So nothing to worry about there. For the motherboard, we have the X570 Phantom Gaming X from ASRock. Another uh, spot that I decided we're not going to skimp on this. We're going to go all out and make sure that we get the best stuff. So Ezrock's motherboards of the last, th uh, last three or four years um, have been pretty much what I've been using in my main systems. I've had no problems, and that's why I keep using the Ezrock in my own systems. Cha-ching, they paid me. They didn't actually pay me. They should be paying me for this. I want to make sure we had some good memory in there. So I got the Patriot Viper. We've got 16 gigabytes of that running at 3600 megahertz, and it's easy to push this to 3800. It's good memory, so it'll overclock. And this motherboard can handle up to four... 666. Six. Had to say it that way, just, just had to. But that's with overclocking. So this motherboard can easily handle uh, overclocking. Now, I let you guys vote online which uh, CPU cooler I should use. Should I use water cooling? Or did you guys want to see just the Wraith cooler that comes in the box? And the vote said the Wraith cooler. And that's what we're going to use. I was a little surprised, but I, I get it. Everyone wants to know, like, when they spend a couple hundred bucks, 150 bucks, whatever it is to get their part, $200, $300, it comes with a cooling unit. And if you don't want to spend any more money, this cooling unit does work. It is nice and silent. It's got your RGB. So it checks off a lot of boxes. And does it work? Does it does it cool well enough? So yeah, it does. You're not going to be able to do as much overclocking as with water cooling, but that's what you get in the box for the price. All right, first off, let's do a little overview on the 3400G. So this is more of a refresh of the previous APUs from AMD. Um, it's still using the 12 nanometer manufacturing process. The base clock's 3.7 and a little turbo all the way up to 4.2, giving it a pretty decent frequency. You got four cores, but you also got four more threads. So you got eight uh, processes going on in total at the same time. This is a really solid CPU. This is sort of like the CPUs Intel was making a couple years ago with four cores and eight threads, because they were like, we don't have to worry about AMD. We could just keep making quad cores forever. No, nobody's even going to care. And AMD came out and was like eight core, 12 core, six core. And then Intel's like, oh, shit. so that's kind of what happened. But this one, still your quad core. So we're going to see how that runs. And we're going to test that one with the GPU. I'll do another video later testing it without the GPU. Just, you know, for you guys who want to get a $150 part, not spend any money on the GPU and get a really budget gaming rig going. We'll talk about that in another video. Next up, we got the Ryzen 5 3600X, sort of the sweet spot. Really good price point on this one. Uh, going to be very competitive with an i5 but the performance on this is really nice. This is a six core um, part with 12 threads. Boost clock goes up to 4.4 gigahertz and you can push that just a little bit. These parts don't uh, overclock as well as some of the previous generations. And I think that might be because it's a seven uh, nanometer manufacturing process. That's a really tiny manufacturing process going on here, but this is the new generation of, of, of Ryzen parts. And then the, the last but not least, the one that I got from my system, just because I wanted to get a couple more cores. I've got an 8700K. This is going to be very similar for gaming performance, but those couple extra cores are going to really help when I'm using Unreal Engine or doing video editing or something like that. So the Ryzen 7 3700X, same boost clock as the 3600 at 4.4. Uh, it's eight core, 16 threads. Oh yes, just feels so nice, so nice. Also seven nanometer manufacturing process going on here with this and th those two come with the uh, the Wraith cooler. All right, let's see how fast these run uh, when it comes to benchmarks. Now, I did a few just CPU specific benchmarks so you can see, you know, how much the extra cores actually do affect productivity and general use. So first off, 7-zip, as you can see here, 
Uh, the 3700X is way ahead of the rest of them. When you look at the 3600X, it's still extremely fast. Uh, when compared to similarly priced products from Intel and also uh, just stuff from the previous generations. Now we take a look at Cinebench. And again, you can see same story here. More cores, more performance, more frequency, more performance. Holy sh boom. Uh, but even compared to the similarly priced Intels, uh, the AMDs are going to have an edge because you just have more cores for your money with uh, these AMD parts. All right, let's hop over into some games. Now, the games I tested uh, two different ways. So I tested the games at 1080p or 720p at usually lower settings. Uh, and that's because I don't want to have any bottlenecks at all. I just want to see what the CPUs can do. Just pure raw CPU performance. And the way to do that is to lower the resolution to something that you're probably not going to be using at home. But just know that it scales to a certain point and then the GPU kind of takes over as your, your heavy muscle when you're doing like 4K gaming and stuff. Except for Doom. And I want to start with Doom because this game is so well optimized and it looks so amazing. I had to watch out because I was hitting the 200 FPS cap in the game. And that's, that's kind of ridiculous. Um, so instead of going in and figuring out how to remove the 200 FPS cap, I actually ran this one at 4K. So Doom Ultra, Ultra settings at 4K. With this setup, all three of these are very similar in performance. Like, take a look at that. Even the 3400G running like this is about the same speed as the 3700X. The 3600X actually got a little faster. So the game just really likes the GPU. It likes CPU a little bit, but it really likes the GPU. Doesn't seem to care about all the extra cores and all that sort of thing. The first couple of cores are the ones it likes the most. Now, we can see a little, little bit of a difference here uh, when we crank it down to low settings at 4K. But even then, there's not that much difference in performance. The 3600X somehow won that one as well. So just scratch my head a little bit there because that's not something I expected from any of the benchmarks. But hey, there we have it with Doom. I really like the 3600X. You know, when you're talking like 150, 149, somewhere in that range, um, you know, a few FPS is not that big of a deal. But now let's move on and take a look at Metro. I ran this at uh, 720p and 1080p. Here, we do see that the extra cores matter a little bit, but not that much. So between the 3400G and the 3600X, there's a bit of a frequency difference, and you actually see that, but also the cores make, uh, make a difference. However, the extra cores for the 3700X here don't really matter all that much. They matter a little bit, but when you're playing it like 1080p and 4K, and if you turn all these settings up, you're gonna see almost no difference whatsoever in the 3700X and the 3600X. So again, if you're only gaming, 3600X is going to be a beast. All right, let's move on to uh, Shadow of War. And similar story here. Of course, 3400G is still completely usable and still really good in the price point. But once you step up to the 3700 and also the 3600, those two guys, they're competing, but there's a little bit of I mean, a few percentage points difference there. So yeah, you get a, a couple extra frames. You know, this game seems to like CPU just a little bit. But again, if you can save money and get a 3600X, you can maybe get a 2080 or a better GPU. You know, like you could upgrade your GPU. So think of it that way. Once you're really playing your games, GPU matters a ton. All right, we decided to run uh, Superposition to give you an idea um, of what it's going to be like when you're cranking out lots of physics that's sort of CPU bound. But again here, seeing a similar story, 720p, you see the muscle of the 3600 and 3700 uh, beating the 3400G. But once you turn it up to 1080p, it's not as apparent. In fact, a little better than the 3600X, uh, but not quite as good as the 3700. But all these are, in my opinion, pretty similar in performance when it comes to 1080p uh, with superposition. And also, again, there, it's like 3600X, 3700 for gaming. I don't know. But wait, but wait, let's look at The Witcher and see what that tells us about things. So The Witcher, I don't believe that game was really uh, hyper-threaded when it first came out. It wasn't really designed for multiple cores, but it seems like in, in the latest updates, it really likes extra cores, like really likes extra cores. And I was kind of scratching my head. Now we did run this at the lower settings and stuff. So there is that. Didn't have a lot of filters and stuff turned on, just running it, running it on low to see what the CPU can do. But take a look at this. Yeah, the 3400G with the four cores and eight threads, nowhere near as quick as the 3600X 720p. And then the 3700X is also just that much quicker. So this game is actually using those cores and we can see a difference here. And in the future, now that we have so many Ryzen parts on the market, just, you know, getting more cores out there for everybody and Intel had to, had to answer and they're like, we gotta get some cores out there too. 
I think that future games are really going to start taking advantage of more cores. And you see this in, even in the game engines like, you know, Unreal and stuff being like, yeah, we'll, we'll start doing stuff so that the more cores are going to give you more benefit instead of just focusing on two to four cores. So that's pretty cool. Looking at 1080p, uh, another similar story. The 3400G and the 3600X are, you know, kind of similar, but the 3700, it just loves those extra cores. So the 3700X is going to be more future proof. The 3600X is amazing for the money, and it'll play most of your games at about the same speed, unless they're really, really taking advantage of those extra cores. Maybe Arma would also be similar to Witcher 3, but I didn't test that one out. I'm kind of curious to know what you guys think and what your experiences are. I also want to know which, which one of these you guys are going to get. You grab one of these, you grab one of these. What, what are you grabbing? So let me know. I'll be using the 3700X in my system. Can't wait to get those extra cores going for rendering and stuff. But that's pretty much the story that uh, we have here today. All right, it's time to take this thing apart and put it in my rig. If you guys have any questions, throw them in the comments. Maybe over on the forum would be nice. Also, grab yourself a shirt. This is our I don't party shirt. We also have got mice and keyboards and all kinds of stuff. And if, you, if you're building a new system, uh, make sure that you get a VPN. I've been using private internet access for five years now. Had no problems with them, and they're very quick. I uh, recommended to someone on the forum a few days ago, and, and they wrote back immediately like, yep, it's faster than NordVPN, so cool. I'm glad you guys like it. Anyway, uh, links to all this stuff will be in the description, and we'll see you guys next time.